I have not done one of my strangest wiki videos in a long time, and I need to correct that. Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex is a strong contender for, like, top 10 most finished games in the world, right? I know what its reputation is like, but I kind of have a soft spot for it just because it was one of the first games I ever played. I know the game design is rough, and Crash's model is rough, and the whole thing is rough, but... Crash Bandicoot has a wiki called Bandipedia, and Bandipedia's entries for the boss fights in Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex are extremely good. Take, for example, the first boss fight, Earth Crunch, Rumble in the Rocks. When Crash arrives at the arena in his Atlas Sphere, Rockco gives Crunch a hot rock donned sphere. The notion of simply attacking Crunch by bumping into him will not work and will only drain Crash of health as he takes damage when Crunch touches him, either purpose or accident. The reason why the two marsupials are in spheres is that there are rocks that move around and always bump into each other. <laughs> Unless one of the bandicoots hits a rock. <laughs> why, why does that explain why they're in spheres? <laughs> That's not even funny. The purpose of the two rocks that are colliding into each other in the arena, and the same purpose applies to the other two phases, is that when all of them are turned blue, a torrent of rocks will hit the crunch and take health away. So Crash must turn all of the rocks blue by colliding into them, and therefore allowing a downpour of rocks to hit crunch. Second phase, the whole idea of the battle is still the same as the first phase, but with one new change, the duo of rocks needed to hit have now become a trio of rocks that Crash needs to hit before Crunch can. Third phase! The rules and strategies from the first two phases have not changed. The only thing that has changed is, which is the only thing that changes in this boss battle, the number of rocks, as there are now a quadruplet of rocks that Crash must hit to defeat Crunch. After Crunch is hit one last time with the landslide of rocks, Crunch falls in defeat, and Rockco is locked in hibernation again, whose elemental comrades will follow later. I feel like I'm going insane. You could have condensed this to like four sentences. Let's take a look at the page for the second boss fight, Water Crunch or Drain Damage. The battle starts after Crunch and Wawa leap over to the second platform. However, Crash cannot just simply leap across the stones and spin onto Crunch. He has to have perfect timing, or he will be vaporized by the greenish-blue wave. Wasn't the greenish-blue wave the thing that caused, like, retcons in the Sonic comics? Crash cannot stay on one platform forever, as they will sink if stays on one for two. Too long. The true mark of a citizen of the internet is universally replacing the word because with as and thinking that makes you sound smart. I really like the, the consistency of spin onto crunch. Like, that's producing all kinds of mental images. Now crunch has a new ability in this round. Semicolon! <laughs> He can now pound his fists on the ground, sending shockwaves onto the three platforms. If Crash moves a muscle at the wrong time, he will vaporize as per usual. Yeah, just typical Crash Bandicoot things, just Crash going about his day vaporizing. Also, I love if Crash moves a muscle at the wrong time, like if he fucking blinks, he's done for. <laughs> the attack pattern of the waves is the same with the addition to the shock waves at the end. Therefore, Crash must jump at the right time, dodge, and stand still. Then he can again spin on to Crunch again. <laughs> After Crash spins onto Crunch for the final time, Crunch will vanish into bubbles and Wawa will be imprisoned again, and the duo leave nothing else besides the double jump. Crash then grabs it and leaves the area. I like that this stopped being a strategy guide and just became like a plot summary. Then the third boss fight, Fire Crunch, Crashes to Ashes, whose theme song is a 
fucking banger, by the way. For the first round and the next two after this, there is no way to attack Crunch head on. Why is it in italics? Like, as if you're going off? Because if Crash tries to, he will burn to smoldering ash as there is a wall of flame protecting Crunch from frontal assault. And it is impossible to go behind Crunch without being deep fried either. This reads like the cringiest 90s game manual. Like, I could picture like a cool, like, 90s, like, fucking Simpsons game or something on the PS1 that's like, well, watch out for this blazing baddie. Don't try to penetrate his wall of flame or you'll be deep fried before you know it. As Crash walks away further, there is a mechanical suit waiting for him, forcing Crash to counterattack with a water gun. After Crash douses the fiery bandicoot, Pyro will reignite the wall of flame. Why is this written like a fanfic? I can't handle this. After finishing him off, Crunch's hot body is destroyed. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's a certain demographic that really enjoys Crunch. More power to them. And then the fourth boss, Air Crunch, Atmospheric Pressure. After Crunch's health is emptied out, Crunch's genie-like body explodes violently, and Lolo is once again trapped in hibernation, alongside the last three elementals before him. This is the only battle in the game where Crunch appears to die, <laughs> since his body explodes and his skeleton is shown. And now for the final boss, Crunch Time. Is it me, or does that name seem like a cry for help? The arena seems to take place in a spaceship that is round in appearance. Indigo means Wawa? But, but, but that's me! For the start of the battle, Crunch is seen facing Crash's direction, and Crunch immediately jumps behind Dr. Cortex, and then hits the button that is farthest to the left-handed side. The left-handed side <laughs> that calls Rockco so that he can try to burn Crash with falling rocks that are hot. <laughs> now Crunch turns up the heat as he calls upon Pyro's help. The attack process is a rinse, lather, and repeat from the last two phases. And then it describes the ending. Cortex is seen mourning his loss and as <laughs> Like he's in a funeral? <laughs> Did Crunch actually die when he turned into a skeleton? And asking why is it that Crash will never let Cortex win, as well as what does Crash want from him by calling him Cretin? I'm picturing Crash going, You're a Cretin, Cortex! And then Cortex goes, What do you want from me? <laughs> well, he's at the funeral, of course. <laughs> Uka Uga places the blame on Cortex for this failed scheme and tries to kill Cortex by firing a ball of light at him who in turn dodged the attack and hit one of the critical components of the ship, causing a terminal malfunction. Crunch wakes up from the assault that he had received earlier, but Cortex's influence on him is gone. Crunch is apparently ready to have at Cortex for what happened before the game, but Aku Aku says there is no time to worry about that, and they must leave the ship now. Luckily for the trio, Coco shows up on her rocket to pick everyone up, but Cortex and Uka Uka are not so lucky as they are flung down to an icy place where Uka Uka, who calls Cortex idiot, fool, and nincompoop, pursues Cortex again and again. Crunch vor Neo? Maman Crunchisif? Crunch sight? <laughs> Anyway, I think I'm gonna call it. I think that's enough for one video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked the video. As always, consider checking out my channel or my Twitter at Indigo's Findings. See ya!